that our investigation system of crime is defective for now. Most of the times, people are arrested, and before you know it, they are put into, they are sent to magistrate courts and put in prison while they await investigation. I would prefer a situation where, upon receipt of complaint on anybody for any crime, crime does not die for crying out loud. Therefore, investigation should take its time, investigators should take time to first of all investigate. Investigation, in my view, is more costly than even criminal prosecution because it might entail them traveling far, going to different places to confirm stories based on the complaint of the complainant. When that investigation is thoroughly concluded and you move to the next stage, the next stage, the final stage should be arrest of the accused person or the suspect. By the time you are making the arrest, you have enough details to allow the man or the woman to sing his song and tell all the lies he wants to tell, if he has to tell. When you have recorded that first statement of lies or whatever it is, then you confront him with the hard facts you had obtained in the course of the investigation. Usually, such suspects will know that you have dug into their, their past or into the issue at stake before pouncing on them. So they will want to change their story. The second story they are going to change becomes statement number two. You record that statement exactly the same way they have delivered it and keep it in the file and confront them again if they want. This can go on for weeks. By the time the prosecutor takes the case, gives legal advice and goes to court, he is ready to fly. In which case, matters about bail are not treated the way they are treated now. Because the essence of bail is to secure the attendance of the accused person. So, the prosecution should not take delight in just denying bail as such, but allow the man to go if he can provide reasonable shorties. Because keeping indigent people in prison, young boys and young girls in prison, in itself creates a problem. It gives a lot of overhead costs to the prisons, and they are kept there, they are not educated, they don't have the chance to go to school. There are little or no schools in the prisons for them to go into. Major part of their lives are wasted. And by the time they are coming out after 15, 14 years in prison, maybe they are not even convicted. They are made to start their life afresh. I think issues about human rights will be given adequate consideration if I have the privilege to head any ministry in that area. That is my little opinion on the prison and what we can do about it. Distinguished Senator Akbabio, Your Excellency, you took on the issue of frivolous petitions engaging a winner of an election, and after long, long stories, you kind of that the petitions may not have any substance, and uh, what are the remedies available? Sir, in our legal system, we already have remedies. It only takes your lawyer to look at what to do. For instance, if a man makes a criminal allegation against you which are false, even if it is in a civil situation, but the content of the complaint is criminal, and he makes that allegation against you, and either cannot prove it right, or he even goes to court, and he loses that complaint, you have a right to seek redress. There are various tortious remedies available. The thought of malicious prosecution, the thought of unlawful detention, the, 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 the thought of defamation of character. Once that article was published, not just to the government agencies for, for, for solution, but he takes it to the press because he wants to scandalize your name. At the end of that, patiently waiting, and he is proved wrong, you can resort to litigation and claim huge amount of money. Medical doctors also could go through that same one if a medical doctor treats you negligently and you have suffered some defamation on account of that. You can take actions on gross negligence. These remedies are tortious, but a number of times our victims of such complaints either do not have the patience to seek redress because our legal system still grinds very slowly. 
too slowly for many of our likings. But if you are patient and determined, you can take up the action and a diligent counsel can walk through, no matter the length of time, and you can still get justice. But I think that the primary question here is that of speedy trial. How do we get speedy trial? In my view, the legal system in our country is being slowed down, not only because of absence of laws. The laws are plenty. We have enormous laws. But the main issue is in this time and age, apart from a few states like Lagos, majority of our courts are still analog. The judges are taking time to write in their long hands. And if you go outside of this nation to other clients, you have all manner of secretariat staff, registry staff, that record what the proceedings are for the day without the judge having to write anything. He watches the prosecution witness or the defense counsel or the defense witness and judge whatever he wants. Because there's a recorder, video recorder, there's an audio recorder, there's a shorthand expert typing. There are all manner of machines copying what he's doing. And if you watch them carefully, they could, say, they could pause and say, look, what did the witness say in the last 10 minutes as a social, 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 social issue? And those gentlemen will wind back and press the tape and it will play out what he has said. Under that circumstance, they can afford to exchange pleadings and then the court will fix maybe two, three months or even six months for trial. On the day of trial, trial must go on. If you take adjournment for two days, for two times, the next time you are denied, your case is dismissed. If you don't have, if you don't want to go to trial, we are yet to get to that stage. I know it is capital intensive, but if we must do it right, then we cannot avoid the cost. We must go into it because justice is key to an egalitarian society. And I think if I have the privilege, Mr. President, sir, to head any ministry that deals with this issue, I will thoroughly take time to advise it. Even if it means using some clients, some states, as example, even if it means the, the Federal, Federal Executive Council collaborating with some states, we can start with some states, and the governors who appreciate such can make contributions to it, and then use maybe two, three costs, for example, and we can move ahead from that. Uh, uh, that's the, as far as my reaction to Your Excellency is on that point. Your second point is on the Northeast, the calamity that has befallen Northeast on account of Boko Haram and what we can do to take care of these unfortunate children who are victims of this war that is ongoing. So if my heart goes out for these children, recently my wife a registrar of a private university has decided to resign his job, her job, and she wants to go into an NGO that would take care of these IDPs and children. As an educationist, we are putting some funds together for her to bring education closer to these children in their IDPs location. I believe that many of us as individuals can play a role in it, but happily there are international government or agencies that have interest in this kind of area. It's not a thing that the government alone can do. But I assure you, sir, it is a critical area that must be done so that the psyche of these children will not remain deformed as it is now. Because many of them are hopeless, they are dejected, they don't know where the future lies, they don't know what will become of them in future. It's a terrible situation. And I think that the, 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 the Mr. President, who, or who loves this area very well. He is passionate about it. On day one, he began by trying to fight how the war will come to an end. I believe that taking care of the victims of this war will form part of Mr. President's agenda. If he does, I'll be more than willing to offer whatever advice we can, given the circumstances of the situation, to improve the lot of those children. Senator John, distinguished Senator John, you did raise the issue of war against corruption and whether I think the enabling laws that we have now are sufficient. In my view, no nation can codify all laws 
for every